model uh, a probabilistic problem using discrete distribution with 5, 6, 7 uh, discrete distribution it is not possible. So, you have to enlarge the class of discrete distribution. So, how you will enlarge? Enlarging is happening through derived distribution, deriving, deriving further distribution from the existing distribution that is the de derived distribution. And uh, how, what is meaning of that? So, that means till now we have already seen discrete uh, uh, random variable. So, when uh, I am saying discrete random variable, it is a map from sample space omega to omega x range of uh, the collection of random numbers the where uh, each uh, random outcome has been mapped ok and what kind of uh, because x is a discrete so what is omega x it is a sequential thing that means we are able to write a random number in term of a single sequence so you can call it a random sequence as well ok x x k x of x k and this one is discrete random variable we had already defined and the correspondingly we had seen probability mass function. What was the uh, uh, domain of probability mass function? Can you recall? Domain of capital P probability major it was what? Sigma algebra. As sigma algebra it is coming from sample of space omega. The similar structure of sigma algebra, they are also coming in omega x, what we call Borel algebra or Borel shape. So, here, in, uh, here you observe uh, in sigma algebra. Sigma algebra is what? It is collection of events. Events happen, happen to be a subset of omega which are constructed by a specific statement. So, this one is sigma algebra and corresponding to sigma algebra in the collection of random number because random outcome has been mapped to random numbers. So, similarly uh, events, events will be mapped to some kind of collection of random numbers. So, that some kind of collection of ran random number we are calling it uh, Borel algebra. So, Borel algebra generally we denote it by uh, call it simply uh, something beta type and you can put here he, here you need two things omega and x with respect to a random variability is coming omega x so this borel algebra uh, p is a map from borel algebra to where 0 to 1 because p is directly talking about probability close interval 0 to 1 so, these two things we had already seen. P we are calling it uh, probability mass function and X is discrete random variable. And the definition of uh, uh, probability mass function is having three properties that we had already discussed. So, we have already discussed all these ok and just six, seven discrete distribution we have discussed after uh, disc uh, probability mass function we have discussed. Now, we will enlarge uh, the class of discrete probability uh, discrete random variable. So, how will enlarge that? So, x is a discrete random variable, how will enlarge? By taking function of x. If you are talking function of x, then it is again a random variable. If x is a random variable and you are defining function of a random variable, then that would be again a random variable and we will give name to that random variable y. So, y we will call it derived random variable, derived discrete random variable. Okay. And if it is a derived discrete random variable, then we will say ask what is the probability mass function of y? Actually, here suffix will come here. Probability mass function of x, so px will write here. So, here we will compute probability mass function of y. Okay. That will denote it by py p suffix y and uh, we will see all these things. So, that is the, so as much as, uh, so 
do you have any limitation over coming with function of a random variable as much as possible you can come up with if sample space is finite then there would be limitation you can talk about how many possible ifs. but we had already seen that in discrete uh, probabilistic modeling sample space may go to infinite in countably infinite like set of natural number set of integers or rationals rational so you can go like that okay so that uh, it is simply saying that you can come up with various class of discrete random variable so there is no limitation that means it is all about enlarging the class of discrete random variable so those things we will discuss here uh, discuss here so first here why we are calling it derived discrete random variable and the corresponding p of y we call it derived probability mass function so that we will discuss in today's class so uh, here uh, first uh, de derived discrete random variable it is coming through a function so simply call function of a discrete random variable and we will call uh, compute its probability distribution okay so suppose y is a function of x that one is defined by g you can raise a question why i am not talking, talk, taking f generally we are used to taking function as f now i am taking g but later you will see that f is just uh, fixed for uh, probability density function of a continuous random variable so that's why i am those, those are very much traditional uh, convention in probability that's way so if uh, p is like a small p is book for probability mass function a small f is book for uh, probability density function that's why i'm not taking f here okay i'm taking g so if y is a function of x that means y equal to g of x and y then y is also a random variable since it assign a numeric to each possible outcome each possible outcome then how it will assign numeric uh, that random number numeric means random number numeric value random number to each possible random outcome uh, it is through composition mapping you can see it here so i am saying that y is a function of x so simply x is itself a function of random outcome no? uh, sample space that means it, it domain is sample space random it is a function of random outcome a small omega so if g, x is function g is function then by default what is the composition relation between what is the relation between two functions if you are writing in juxtaposition this notation is juxtaposition notation if you are not putting any gap in juxtaposition notation you see what is the operation between these two uh, function it is a composition composition is the operation okay so product kind of operation is composition is coming there so y is actually composition of g and x x is discrete and numerable g is a function and here remember that g and x both are deterministic in nature there is no randomness randomness in g neither in x so we, so we can say that in y also there is no randomness now how randomness in uh, then how randomness is coming so by mapping random outcome under y to a random number okay random number this one is a random number omega is a random outcome has been mapped to a random number you can call it a small y this one is the small y one realization of y so you can say that y has been omega has been mapped to y under this composition map omega has been mapped to y so you can say that the mapping is happening through this way okay but omega has been mapped to a small y a small omega so uh, this a small omega is random outcome random in nature we can't say that it exists with probability 1 existence of omega you will talk about it will have probability between 0 and 1 okay likewise a small y is a real number so again we will say that probability of occurring small y would be also between 0 and 1 so both are random in nature both are random in nature both are having probability some probability okay so i think it would be clear to everyone what is function of a random variable okay so to obtain probability mass function of y p of a small p of y for an observed value of capital y that uh, function of uh, x 
it is observing a value a small y a small y this small y is what it is one instance instance instant of instance or we can say that one sort of y one observation of y so and this one is uh, just notation that derived function of x we have told that and this one is one observation y so this y is a random number so one observation y we we add the probabilities of all x which are mapped to y that means in order to compute probability mass function for y that means as per see the definition so probability mass function value of probability mass function at y is how it is defined probability measure that y is observing value a small y okay one once you are saying that a small y it is fixed okay then uh, here this one is fixed so one fixed thing we can't change what thing we will change here y we will change left hand side y is what y is g of x so here we will write probability that g of x is observing value a small y now if uh, uh, that is the situation but here x is given to us we know everything about x so how will write this probability measure in term of x so if you are willing to write in term of x then you will write probability that x is equal to inverse image of y again i am saying that inverse image of y so inverse image it is not a inverse function it is inverse image of y why someone may raise a question why i am saying it is inverse image of y because the small y what i had mentioned at this moment a small y is fixed it is not variable it is fixed so how will say that it would be a function if you are defining a function then you need variability now variability in the domain so it is fixed right now so that's why i am saying that it is what g inverse y we say that it is inverse image of y so it is a set subset it is a subset okay subset where in the omega x range of x where is this one it is in o omega x now it is a subset you can write it here it is a subset in omega x that means it is b kind of set what i told that collection of some sort of random numbers random numbers okay now then if you are talking about uh, the third property of uh, you can call it it is b kind of set or here you can say that b kind of set so how you compute probability that x belongs to random number of those belongs to b how you compute so you sum the probability mass function of x for all those x which are coming from b so that's means summing so that means we are summing so this we can again say that we are summing uh, p of x for all x which are mapped to y that means uh, all the inverse images x are all the inverse images of y it is like that okay this is the way to define value of probability mass function at y this way we will compute okay and later we will see various nature of g based on g we will compute various things so uh, uh, the probability distribution p of y is called we will call it a derived distribution of x under the function g and it satisfy the all three axioms of being a probability mass function what are those axioms that value of probability mass function it always between 0 and 1 if you keep if you keep on observing all possible value of y then correspondingly the value of small p of y it will be between 0 and 1 including 0 and 1 it means okay so it is taking a, a small p of y is taking value between 0 and 1 secondly what you do Uh, if you sum probability mass function for all y then sum will uh, carry forward like this way like uh, each py is defined so you are talking sum of p p of y so p of y is coming like this way okay coming like this way and if you talk about like this then uh, then you are taking summation with respect to y uh, remember that if i talk about uh, Uh, summation first with respect to all possible inverse images of a specific y then you are talking about summation with respect to all possible inverse images uh, uh, image of all y so what is meaning of that it will talk about 
all possible random number there in omega x totally din so what y is map from y is a function from x so what would be domain of y it would be omega x now Do, domain of y is omega x so if you talk about totality of all inverse images of y so it will talk about totality of omega x so that means this double summation becomes sum single summation summation for all x of p of x and we had already seen that what would be sum of this one one so that's way uh, the derived distribution is also satisfying this normality condition and third condition is just as it is to compute probability of some, some sort of random numbers third one is just computational uh, thing okay so this one is uh, so here we will call y is a derived random variable and p of y is the derived probability mass function or derived distribution we can call it okay one question i am taking here very simple question so in a existing question you can come up with derived distribution how consider rolling a dice so the sample space would be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay it is obvious now we transform the face label of the die with number 001122 it is not like that the face would be same we if you know painting we can do that now so we can so we are changing the name of face so first two face we called 00 second uh, third and fourth we call it 1 1 and fifth and sixth we call it 2 2 so we are changing the labels if that is the situation so what we have done actually we have done we have taken a function of if you define x a random variable from omega to omega x first random variable in a dice when you are throwing a dice so here is omega is itself a collection of random numbers omega itself a collection of random number so omega is map to omega self mapping omega x is equal to omega x you can why because the omega is itself a collection of random numbers so that's way omega x is itself equally equal to omega you can call it because of uh, nature of omega over this we have defined y y as a function of x how we define how it is defined so it is defined like this way x is observing six value 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 okay and under the function of y one has been mapped to zero two has been mapped to zero three has been mapped to one four has been mapped to one five has been mapped to two six has been mapped to two so that mapping it is coming so through that labeling see the what is mapping here so through new labeling we have mapped all these okay so why is again a random variable and if you uh, are saying why is a random variable the ultimate domain of y should be sample space omega do you see that yes we can see uh, there is a trace of uh, value of y up to omega so yeah, this one is omega Yeah, under x, this one is under x. One has been mapped to one, two has been mapped to two, three has been mapped to three, four has been mapped to four, five has been mapped to five, and six has been mapped to six. Six has been mapped to six. So that you can see that. so likewise from here we can say that uh, one has been mapped to zero so you can say this one is y and this here it is x so we can say that what is the ultimate domain of y it is omega so y is a function from omega to random numbers okay so y is a legitimate 
random variable. So always being a, not every map would be a random variable. When it will be a random variable, if the domain would be complete sample space. Sample domain must be complete sample space, ultimate domain if you are willing to point. And if you are having already observed y as a function of x, so then we will compute probability mass function of y. Okay. So here y would be here. Probability mass function of y at zero. It is de defined as probability mass function of y equal to zero. What does it mean? Uh, it means all the omega which has ma mapped to zero. What are those omega which are mapped to zero? One and two mapped to zero. So that's why sum of pro all the probability which has been mapped to zero. What are those? One and two. So probability of one is what? One by six. Probability of two is one by six. So what is probability mass function of y at zero? It is uh, two by six means one by three. Likewise, uh, probability value of probability mass function at one, it would be y equal to one, y equal to one. And what um, here we have to sum the probability for omegas. What are those omega? Three and four. So again, it is coming like this way. A value of uh, protein mass function of y at 2, that means protein measure that y is observing value 2. Okay. So what is that? That it is of, uh, sum of the probability where omega is equal to 5 and 6. It is coming as 1 by 3. So this is the way to compute uh, protein mass function of derived random variable. So uh, geometrically, you can see it here. 1, 1, 2 has been mapped to 0, uh, 3, 4 has been mapped to 1, and 5, 6 has been mapped to 2. Geometrically, you can see. So, all I have explained first example. The second example, uh, take uh, absolute uh, value of uniform discrete random variable, absolute value, mod x. x is a uniform discrete random variable, and we are defining function of x as mod x. So, uh, here taking y is equal to mod x and x is a uh, uniform discrete random variable. What does it mean? If it is taking x is observing n number of value, then each uh, observation is having probability 1 by n. So that situation is good. So x is a uniform discrete random variable and probability mass function of, uh, here x is observing value between minus 4 to 4 but in integer form not taking as a real. Intersection with integer means one integral value it is taking. So how many integers are there between minus 4 to 4? How many integers are there? 4 plus 4 including 0, then 9. In total, 9 integers would be there. So 9 integers. So and uh, uh, each integer is equally likely because uniform distribution we have taken. So probability uh, mass function would be 1 by 9 for each 9 points, 1 by 9. So we got this. Okay. Now we have to find probability mass function of y, p, p y. We have to find it. So how will find? So as x observe first, this you can call it first step. This question might be simple, but later complicated question will come. No? So if you practice uh, uh, in a very intuitive way with simple question, you will be able to solve difficult question as well. So as here we observe x, x is taking value from this, okay, and also what we observe, y equal to mod of x. So what are the possible observed value of y? What are the possible observed value of y? Mod of x. So what are the possible observed value of y? It would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, just 5 values, you will see that. And under the map y equal to mod x, uh, y is observing this value. Okay. Further, we are willing to compute protein mass function of x, y. So how will compute? Uh, so first, uh, just uh, these are uh, five in number, so it is very easy to compute. Protein mass function of y at zero, uh, as per definition, it is protein measure that y is observing value zero. And see here the uh, game. What is y? zero is fixed. We can't uh, change zero. Y is function of x. So here we will write y in place of y. We will write it modulus of x. 
so tell me if you are having a variable random variable whose modulus is 0 what would be possible value of x 0 itself so that's where if your modulus of x equal to 0 then point, uh, it is equal to probability that x is your value only 0 and that means what is this one it is probability mass function of x at 0 now what is that value 1 by 9 fine now if you are taking any non zero value of y and you are willing to compute probability mass function at that point so it will say that probability that y is observed value small y here this one is fixed similar to zero this one is fixed so here now this y is actually function of x so we will write modulus of, that one is modulus of x so probability that modulus of x equal to y so what would be possible value of y that means we are looking for inverse images of y what are the inverse images of y what are the possible if modulus of x equal to y the what are the possible value that x will observe plus minus y so that means here x is observing two value either minus y or plus y and minus y plus y if i talk these two are two different value so as the property of uniqueness of a function it will define what partition of sample space uh, will be totally disjoint mutually disjoint it would be so probability so it what would be this one probability that x is observing value equal to y plus x is observing value equal to minus y it is coming from third log probability measure it is coming simply y minus y x equal to minus y and x equal to y both are mutually disjoint there are no common things mutually disjoint that you know so just you have to apply summability probability uh, so probability of this this one is, you can talk one kind of that union of minus y and y so it is just sum of this one uh, what is the probability of x equal to y one by that we'll call it hello pro, probability mass function at y at this we call it hello probability mass function at minus y what is the value of this one by nine value of this one is one over nine so two by nine is coming so this is the process through which you will compute probability mass function of derived random variable okay so next uh, you can see the plot like this way so this one is the plot of probability mass function of x you can see that each value observed value of x is having same height height is talking about probability corresponding probability mass function so uh, uniform so uniform height you will see uniform height all are having same height uniform height now once you are defining function of a random variable y equal to mod of x do you see any uniform pattern here no uniformity has been lost uniformity uniformity has been so uh, this uh, y is having different uh, probability mass function than x it is not like that y a, y is a function of x so y will have the same distribution what x is having it is not like that distribution will change okay distribution will change this one is a very simple example we will take another example also it is coming in the same way so a square of a uniform discrete random variable so we are defining y as a uh, x square and x is a uniform discrete random variable which is taking value from a minus 2 to 2 as integers so how many value would be there 5 value how many integers are there from minus 2 to 2 5 integers now we have to find probability mass function of y how will compute it so computation is coming like in the same way here the first option see just do practice with this approach I definitely I say that it will be not difficult to compute uh, probability der derived distribution of complicated uh, uh, random variable okay so here uh, p of y at 0 it would be probability that y is observed value 0 that means probability measure that x square equal to 0 what are the numbers which are mapped to 0 under the square function the single number 0 itself so what would be the solution of this equation it is x equal to 0 single unit so this one is probability that x is observed value only 0 and that means probability mass function of x at 0 so that value is 1 by 5 now if you are taking uh, y from uh, what are the other value a square you are doing so simply okay uh, why will observe what value you need to talk about under a square function why will observe 0 1 4 so it was rightly quoted now if you are taking y is non-zero then how probability mass function of y at uh, non-zero y 
it is probability that y is observed value a small y. That means uh, this one is fixed. Y is a function of x, so we will write a, 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 x square. Y is equal to x square. So if you are solving this equation, x square equal to y, you have to look for all the inverse images which are mapped to y. What are those x which are mapped to y? There are two plus minus a square root of y. So plus minus plus minus a square root of y. And again, if you talk about x equal to minus square root of y, x equal to plus a square root of y, these you are mutually disjoint. So how you will compute this probability? By summing this probability. Okay. And what is the value of this one? This we call it probability mass function at minus a square root of y. This we call it probability mass function at minus a square root of y. What is value of this? 1 by 5, value of this one is 1 by 5, so total is 2 by 5. So this is the way to compute uh, the right distribution of a square of uniform discrete random variable. Okay. So if you are having all those kind of things, so uh, that one is derived, der, uh, derived distribution. I will pass for uh, further problem for practice. Now we are coming to discuss about joint probability mass function. What is meaning of joint probability mass function? Can you relate it with module 1? Have, have we seen joint probability mass function in module 1? Joint probability kind of thing we have seen in module 1? Joint probability. Have you seen or not? A intersection B. We are talking about uh, just recall multiplication rule. A intersection V. This one is joint kind of thing. Joint occurrence of two event. But situation is coming that A is coming with respect to one random variable X and B is coming coming with respect to another random variable Y. So A, A is actually uh, what? It is coming with uh, one random variable. It is talking about it is uh, equivalent to say that X uh, taking value under a random variable X and B is taking value under random variable Y. B is like this way. Okay. B is like this way. So, uh, this uh, A intersection B, probability of A intersection B, it will take the form of what? In term of random variable. I am changing the uh, set theory notation to numeric notation. Random number notation. So, probability of A intersection B, what kind of form it will take? It will take the form of probability that x is observing value a small x. A has been replaced by random number, observation of a random number and B is also has been replaced by random number. And tell me, if you are everything we have convert in term of number, uh, then what kind of form intersection would take? What would be intersection here? How intersection will replace it? Joint occurrence. So A is taking X kind of value, Y is taking, uh, B is taking Y kind of value. Then here in set theory we talk about between two event we talk about intersection. And uh, this, those two event are coming from, has been mapped to, to uh, coming from two different random variable variable so variable generally we take it one if one variable we are having we take along horizontal axis if we are if you are having another variable we take it along vertical axis why because if you are taking y again along horizontal axis then we will say that y is multiple of x why we are going for y if y is multiple of x the linear a scalar multiple of x then why you are going going for y okay it is not like that means we are not doing a, uh, getting any other extra random uh, variable we are taking the same variable so if we, we don't want 
such kind of relation here. X is one kind of random variable, Y is another kind of random variable. So we are one kind of free things. So free things that means we don't bother about that uh, Y and X are very much related to each other directly, like a scalar multiple of like that Y we are getting from X, right? Now. That situation is coming here, uh, just in general sense. So that's why we are here, the intersection will be replaced by comma. Intersection means in logic we call it end. End can be represented by comma. So that means we say the property that x is observing value a small x and y is observing value a small y. Okay. And what we have seen here previously, previously we have seen that what is name of this quantity? Probably that x is observing value a small x. What we call it? What we call it? We call it value of protein mass function as value of a small p at x. Value of a small p at x. Remember that whenever I am pronouncing x, I am pro pronouncing this x, not this x. This one is suffix, by default it will come, it will give to it. I am pronouncing this x, okay. So, so this quantity we call it a small p of x. Then wha what we will call this uh, property that x is observing value a small x and y is observing value a small y. What we will call this quantity? What we will call this quantity? What we will call? We call a small p of x, there are two random variable x comma y suffix of a small p of x comma y. A small p of x comma y. So it is function of two random variable, two function of two variable kind of things. Have you studied function of two variables? In calculus, you might not have studied in plus two. It is function of two variable, function of one variable. Calculus, what you have studied uh, everywhere, actually in plus two, I think it is function of one variable. Now we have come across function of two variable. What is meaning of that function of two variable? If suppose you there is a selection of uh, basketball player in this uh, campus. Then uh, you people will uh, go to participate, uh, to become player of that team. And there is a coach, coach will note down few things. Coach will ask, what is your age? Okay. What is your weight? What is your age? Uh, leave it. Why? Why I am saying that age, I will leave it. Uh, it might be very much sure that whoever ta have taken admission, age might be above 18 or something like that by default. So that, 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 that one is not a very essential criteria. What would be essential thing? Your height and weight. If height is good, then uh, the, it is really contributing very good in basketball player uh, play or game. And if your weight is moderate, then you also you, you will play rightly. So the, uh, he will note down height and weight both. Based on that, he will classify this person is eligible for basketball and this for learning basketball and this for uh, not learning basketball or okay like that. So simply if I say that the selection of basketball learning player, I am not saying that expert player, learning player, it depends upon two quantities, it is a function of two quantity, height and weight. So height and weight coming together, so that is where it is a function of two variable, multiple. Like someone is bringing another things like agility that uh, 
how much you fast and active something like that that would be third variable so if trying to make selection more, more tougher then coach may come up with various other kind of features so that will make selection much tougher so that means you are going for uh, more number of variables function of three variable four variable five variable that kind of thing so that kind of thing it is not like that just function of one variable height just you are uh, going for just function of one variable like height function height what will happen that one thick person with longer height will come so thick person will be able to play basketball with agility no it the, the some issue will be there okay so again uh, such kind of situation that a, a function of one variable is having limitation you have to go for uh, function of two variable three variable kind of things you have to increase the uh, argument size you have to increase the argument size so that's that's why function of several variable so here joint protein mass function is actually function of two variable or function of three variable three random variable is coming function of three variable like that so don't have to worry about those are very simple kind of thing so here we will talk about if x and y both are discrete random variable we will come up with joint discrete random variable and the corresponding probability distribution will call it joint probability mass function so as we have seen the concept of discrete random variable as a mapping from sample of space omega to a countable set omega x that means collection of random numbers via mapping this mapping we have seen okay that such that each borel set that means a, a subset of omega x is pulls back to an event in sigma algebra so that we had already seen that so how your some instances you would like to measure multiple attributes here there is a single this is a story of single attribute function of single variable that means single attribute but sometime there would be multiple attributes uh, of the outcome in a random experiment so like if you are willing to uh, identify disease risk assessment you go for disease disease risk assessment of a college student from a population then doctor or physician might wish to know height weight blood pressure pulse or various other thing okay so mathematically you will say that here uh, h here random outcome is what random outcome is not a singleton term it is having multiple uh, not a single attribute term it is having multi multiple attribute okay so uh, if you talk about uh, individual level at, sing, uh, at single attribute level so you need to define height kind of random variable that means h it is omega to omega h it just talk about height that means uh, height is converting to uh, uh, random numbers okay so through this then if you talk about weight weight is coming like this way okay if you talk uh, talking about b is a random variable b is talking uh, like this okay if you uh, blood pressure if you talk about uh, uh, that pulse pulse is defining another random variable so in total how many random variable you are having if you just talking about up to pulse doctor is observe, taking reading of all these four attributes that means you are having four random variables whether doctor will go to measure everything individually and uh, based on the individual uh, attribute doctor will say that uh, uh, whether that person is having risk uh, disease or not through individual uh, uh, observation it is not possible to uh, comment on that health risk or disease risk if you make it total for each person uh, if you bring all these four attribute in together or jointly if you are study all those four attribute then you will say something about health issue the doctor will say something about health issue so this height weight blood pressure and pulse all these four if you bring together bring together jointly if you are study then you will come up with some kind of conclusion okay so that's way you will define a random variable which is having four uh, actually four attribute what have you which is having four attribute okay r is a risk r for, from risk so if you are health risk if you are defining health risk so it is having four attribute 
so it is a mapping from this to this four attribute so here what we observe cartesian product have you heard or not in set theory cartesian product uh, you have already heard. so the domain is cartesian product of omega four time it is coming so domain is include that uh, students in the campus and the range is what cartesian product of numbers cartesian product of number so if you talk about s one individual omega it is what four tuple have you heard tuple one is ordered pair if you are talking about two tuple that we call it ordered pair if you go for more than two uh, tuple that three tuple four tuple generally we call it n tuple so here omega is uh, four tuple the correspondingly the random number it is a random number it is also four tuple this one is a four tuple but here the random numbers are coming okay so uh, joint probability for height and weight if you are just focusing on height and weight then joint probability of height and weight how you will define it through this way as definition that uh, in the uh, in case of uh, uh, single random variable what we had defined now here we are coming for multiple random variable so here we will define a composition of probability measure with inverse image of omega i j i is for height and j is for variation of weight okay so the joint probability mass function of uh, height and weight that means this one is what joint number it is talking about joint number with height and weight it is actually talking about uh, height is observing value probability that height, height is observing value hi and weight is observing value omega Uh, sorry uh, wj so if just height and weight i have taken it here so if you talk about uh, height and weight in, in together you are getting various points in 2d this you are getting various point in 2d and the corresponding height is talking about joint probability mass function it is talking about joint probability mass function of uh, that height at those uh, 2d point what you observe those are the uh, probability mass joint probability mass function you observe so what kind of thing you observe here here you observe so in 2d height and weight is taking value and along the height that one is the 3d 3d talking about probability plot probability mass function plot probability mass function plot so it is one kind of 3d plot okay this one that's why it is function of two variable kind of thing is coming function of two variable is coming so so more literal way we will define it like that two discrete random variable that are defined on the same sample of space omega say x take value uh, x1 x2 up to xm and y is taking value y1 y2 up to yn and we say these two are jointly distributed what is meaning, meaning of that they have been bind they are jointly distributed it is not like that Oh, we let it uh, let it transit x value in a different way y in different way both uh, transit in a joint way joint way joint some kind of tied up thing okay so the order pair x y takes value in order in this cartesian product order so x y will take value I, what are the possible value what are the how many value uh, the uh, order pair x y will take it is having uh, m value x is taking m values m random numbers y is taking n random number so how many value order pair will take m into n m into n and the joint probability so how many joint points are there m into n joint points are there so the joint probability mass function can be defined in term of joint function of the joint outcome x is observing volume x is observing value xi and y is observing value yj how you will define you will define that probability mass function as in the similar it is just extension of uh, probability mass function of single random variable it is just ex ex extension of that so probability mass function of uh, uh, xy it is defined as the probability that x is uh, observing value small x and y is observing value small y such that it satisfy all three properties of 
protein mass function. What are those? P of x, y will take value in the interval 0, 1. And if you sum P, x, y, P of x, y for all x, y, then it would be 1. Normalize the condition. And then if you are taking a some sort of joint uh, random numbers, then we can compute the probability by summing for all those random numbers. So this one is competition part. Okay. So one example you can see it here like this way. Consider toss of two coins that are weighted but independent. We might assign x number of head in the first uh, coin, y is number of head in the second coin. Then x, y, x is dealing with first coin, y is dealing with second coin. Then x, y will have a joint protein mass function. We will compute it like this way. As per definition of joint protein mass function, protein P of x, y is equal to P that x is observed value a small x, y is observed value a small y. So, if x is 0 or y is 0, what does it mean? 1 by 1 minus P for x equal to 0, 1 minus P for y equal to 0. So, probability of 0, 0 is 1 minus P whole square. Where is the 0, 0 point? This point is 0, 0. This point is 0, 0. What is the height? Height is describing probability. So what is the probability of observing 0, 0? 0, 0, 0. It is 1 minus p whole square. Now, if you talk about x equal to 0 and y equal to 1, where is x equal to 0 and y equal to 1? x equal to 0 and y equal to 1. This point. We are talking about this point. What is the probability? Probability as a height. What is the probability? What would be? x equal to 0 probability having probability 1 minus p, y equal to 0 having probability p. So, 1 minus p times p. So, height is having value 1 minus p times p. Height just uh, uh, outward type, you define it here. Now, at x equal to 1, y equal to 0. Where is x equal to 1, y equal to 0? x equal to 1, y equal to 0. I am talking about this point. Okay. What is the height here? P into 1 minus P. So, just you have to define height. Three, it needs 3D plot. Okay. Now, x equal to 1, y equal to 0. Where is x equal to 1, y equal to 1? This point. I am talking about this point. What is the height? P square. This is the way to compute joint protein mass function of two random variables. Again, this one is very simple example. I am making it uh, more general kind of things. So, if suppose x and y are two discrete random variable and x take uh, m sort of uh, random numbers x1, x2 up to xm and y take uh, n sort of random number those are uh, jointly distributed then order pair x, y will take mn jointly value joint value mn joint value what are those? these are the joint value ok so the joint probability mass function of x, y uh, it can be defined like this way Again, same thing is coming. Uh, what are the cho joint property mass function? Joint property mass function, it will come in matrix in table. Matrix might be clear to everyone. Okay. Matrix, have you studied matrix or not? So, matrix, so here when you are talking about function of two random variable, matrix notation is coming. That is the property distribution, it is coming in matrix form. So, matrix. So, here uh, along horizontally, y is varying, vertically, x is varying. Depends upon which way you want to take. You can take x horizontally or y vertically as per your choice. So, x, so y is observed value y1, y2, y3. So, how many columns you observe? n number of columns. n number of columns. How, uh, how many uh, rows you observe? In value wise, how many rows you observe? m number of rows. I am numeric value. So, this matrix is m by n matrix. I am talking about this matrix really. m by n matrix. So, total size of this matrix is m by n. It is talking about the distribution of joint protein mass function. m by n joint protein mass function you will get. m by n you will get like that. So, what about uh, if you talk about discrete uh, joint discrete random variable, you will get always this kind of matrix. Okay. Now, once you are having idea of uh, joint uh, 
discrete random variable. I will come up with problem in next class. Let us, uh, we don't have much time, so I will cover this segment marginal. So once you are having uh, joint property mass function from a given, uh, if uh, once we are having joint property mass function, how we can marginalize? Anyone know what is meaning of marginalization? If suppose there are two child in a family, there are two child in a family, one child is getting more importance than others, then what word we are saying? One child, another child got marginalized, left or something like that. So marginalization, so that means we are giving attention to only one. That, that kind of things. We are not giving attention to other. So here again same thing is coming here. If you are talking about we are having uh, two random variable which occurs jointly and if that is the situation, uh, why not we just focus on only one random variable. So that means we do approach the criteria of marginalization. Okay, We are not giving attention to the other one. So here first marginalization for x. Here we are having two random variable x and y. Let us call marginalization for x. Let us call marginalization for x. That means we are computing probability for x only. So how will compute? So p of x we, as per definition we have written it p that probability that x is observing value a small x. Okay. Do we put any condition on x? Why? Why is here free to take any value? That is, we are not uh, caring about why, what value y is taking. In that sense, the marginalized child can do anything now, whatever possibilities are there. Under the possibility scenario, I am not saying that um, impossible things. Under the possibility scenario, the marginalized, the second child, uh, which if you are marginal, marginalizing for one, the second child will uh, do anything, whatever possible things. So that's why I'm saying that if you are just focusing on protein that x is available a small x, then y will do, y will take all possible random number whatever possibilities are there. So that means y is free to take all possible value, that kind of marginalizing. If that is the scenario, that means you are willing to compute protein mass function of this joint random variable and here, here x is observable a small x and y is taking all sort of values, all sort, all possible sort of values. So that means we are summing the joint probability mass function for all y. That means we are summing probability mass function, joint probability mass function for all y. That means y has exhausted all possible values. Y has exhausted, if you are taking joint probability mass function, y is free to take all possible value. Let y take all possible value and then in that case y will be exhausted what remaining thing we will have x only. So that this we call it marginal probability mass function of x. Why have we have already exhausted? Why is finished? By considering all possible value. Because y was free there. We haven't taken any condition over y. So that means we are talking about we have done marginalization for x by exhausting y. What is meaning of again marginalization of uh, uh, child in in a family where there there are two child. If you are giving attention to only one child, parent are giving attention to only one child. That what does it mean? That uh, one child is getting all facilities, all that toys and everything. All second child is not. So second child, what uh, and under under his, uh, his or her capacity, he will do whatever so possibilities are there. He will do that. That kind of situation is coming. So that the marginalization. So marginalization. My by so. Uh, by summing joint probability mass function for all possible y, you will get just probability mass function at x. Likewise, if you are willing to marginalize for y, then here uh, probability mass function of y equal to that what probability that y is observed value small y. Here x is free to take any value. So x is taking all possible value, free to take any value. So all x is taking all possible value. So it is what that means we are uh, summing the joint probability mass function for all x, all x we are and in the process x will be adjusted, we will only have y, probability of y. So this is the way of marginalization.
okay from joint protein mass function so you can see it here one kind of thing so x is taking value along horizontal axis y is taking value along vertical axis so if you are uh, talking about uh, protein mass function of x3 what is like that you just uh, see the column variation in that it will include all possible value of y and that you are summing all these probability of all these joint points how many points these are the joint points now it is uh, these points are coming in 2d so joint point so sum these probability of these points sum of the probability of these points uh, with respect to this line if you are fixing x equal to x3 what does it mean you are getting a line you are getting a line in a line you will get points various joint points sum the probability of all the point so that will give probability of a small p of x3 it will give a small p of x3 this we call it marginal probability mass function of x marginal probability mass function of x okay likewise if you are fixing here along horizontal row here uh, that means you are talking about what is name of this one it is a line y equal to y3 that means y equal to when you are saying y equal to y3 that means uh, x is free to move along the line y equal to y3 it is a line it is like it is free to move okay so that means if, uh, this uh, we are getting these joint points and if you sum all the probabilities of this joint point you will get a small p of y3 so if you are having a joint probability mass function table from there easily you can get probability mass function of individual random variable x and y by marginalization by row sum and column sum row sum and column sum that is the, so if you are having joint then you can get it like that so one example i am taking it like this way consider again uh, toss up two coins that are weighted weighted means by default probability of getting head is not 0.5 it is not equal to 0.5 it would be weighted means some kind of biasness would be there so the first toss is having a probability of success 3 by 4 the second toss is a probability of success 5 by 8 it is not a uh, unbiased coin or fair coin it is unfair coin and so what is the joint probability mass function we have computed x is number of head in the first coin y is number of head in the second coin okay and th these are the joint probability mass function in the one example what i have taken from there you can compute it okay joint probability mass function now we are willing to compute uh, marginal probability mass function of x so how you will compute it do row sum and column sum so don't go for this final comp computation just come up with uh, row sum and column sum so come come up with table so how many entries would be there how many joint points are there how many joint points uh, joint points are there this one is zero this one is one okay how many joint points are there again i am asking four joint points would be there now zero 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 one one zero one one this one is zero zero what is the probability of zero zero what is the probability of 0 0 1 by 8 it is already computed here 1 by 8 what is the probability of 0 1 0 1 here x equal to 0 y equal to 1 0 what is the probability of 0 1 1 by 8 what is the probability of 1 0 1 0 what is the probability of 1 0 1 by 4 What is the probability of 1, 1? 1 by 2. Now, call horizontal axis x and vertical axis y. Y is taking value along vertical axis. So, if you do perform, uh, what do you perform? If you perform column sum, what you will get? Perform column sum. What is the sum of first column? 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8. What is value? 2 by 8. That means 1 by 4. That means you are getting 
value of x equal to 0, property of that x equal to 0 is 1 by 4. 1 by 4, okay. Now, second column sum is what? 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4. What is the value? 3 by 4. You got value of property at x equal to 1. So, column sum is giving property mass function of x. That's marginalization what we do. Now, do row sum. What is the sum of first row? What is the sum of first row? What is the sum of 1 by 8 plus 1 by 4? What is the value? Uh, in notebook, you can compute it if you are facing problem. 3 by 8. And what is the sum of second row? It is 5 by 8. You got it. So, marginalization you have already established by row sum and column sum. Note down in the table, do perform row sum and column sum and get the marginalized property mass function. Okay. Next one is we, we will discuss about conditioning. Next we will discuss about conditioning. Uh, are you getting many many more concept has been discussed? Conditioning is actually I have already discussed conditional probability mass function. No, I have already discussed conditional probability. So it is just generalization from there. Okay. It is generalization from there. And in the next class I will discuss conditioning in very detailed way. But remember that what is the conditional probability mass function? Recall conditional probability mass function. Recall it. What is conditional probability mass function? Conditional probability uh, sorry, recall conditional probability. What is conditional probability? Probability of A given B. It is defined as probability of occurrence of A within B that we call it probability of A intersection B. Normalized by probability of, don't say divided here, normalized by. Why? Why? Because B is the new inverse. We try to compute probability of A from the scenario of B. So, our new inverse would be B. So, we normalize it by probability of B. Okay. And just in the joint probability mass function, I had told that A, we are calling it, it is associated with a random variable X. So, A is defined as an event like x is observing value a small x and y is defined by sorry uh, b is defined by another random variable Variable uh, y is object value a small y. So, in the right hand side, what kind of form it will take? So, in this scenario, what we will have? Probability that x is observing value a small x condition on y is observing value a small y it is equal to what would be this it would be equal to joint probability of x is observing value small x comma y is observing value a small y and in denominator what we will have probability that y is observed value a small y when I am saying y is observing that y is actually capital and at last observing a specific value that we denote it a small so this one is all these are in term of probability measure. How will convert all these in term of probability mass function if all x and y are discrete in variable? So equivalently you will write it a small p okay of x 
गिवन y in we are writing term of protein mass function and the suffix we will put here similar suffix uh, in term of random variable x given y but you will read it here i have told that this is the argument a small p of x given y we are saying and in the right hand side we will have how we denote this one a small p of x comma y a small p of x comma y okay and the suffix you can put here actually uh, it is associated with joint random variable x comma y so those are little bit uh, uh, you can leave it there that one is not an issue but just for sake of notation we are putting it and the denominator what we will have value of protein mass function at y so from conditional probability you come up, come up with conditional probability mass function this we call it conditional probability mass function in next class i will discuss all these in detail this we call it conditional probability mass function condition okay any question no question very obvious thing